Hello, everyone. So today we have a student from the University of California, Riverside. His name is Kylan. And Kylan, can you go ahead and please introduce yourself? Hi, guys. My name is Kylan Yu. I'm, um, I'm a freshman. Well, uh, not a freshman anymore, but I was a freshman at UCR for um, a BA of <clears throat> a BA in um, economics and administrative studies. Um, although I do plan to transfer uh, to another school fall of 2021. Okay, awesome. So I guess, Kyle, first and foremost, um, so why did you choose your major, obviously, in um, economics and administrative studies? Um, I chose economics and administrative studies over like regular economics or pre-business because um, I felt that I needed to learn more about economics before I transferred over to my other major, which is bis uh, which I wanted to have, which is business administration. Um, economics and admin studies at UC Riverside provides a mix of economics and business courses that um, I feel that are really important if you want to actually go into business. Um, aside from like, if you go straight economics, just economics courses, and if you go pre-business, it's just business courses, you know? Okay, so, so you were saying that like doing economics kind of like was to help give you a foundation to transition into like the actual business yeah. world? And having economics and administrative studies helps a lot more with business. So I just chose that. Okay, awesome. Sounds good. And I guess uh, now let's move on and talk a little bit more about uh, UC Riverside. So I guess first and sure. foremost, um, why did you decide on UC Riverside? Um, well, actually, uh, it was because um, like Riverside is uh, relatively, I guess, how should I say this? Like, I wanted to get into a, a higher UC, but unfortunately, um, that did not happen. So I chose Riverside because um, out of my other choices, it was actually a much cheaper option. Like, uh, I had the option of going to, you know, Boston University, Chapman, but it's just after I realized um, that, like, Chapman University only gave me, what, X amount of scholarship money and that really wasn't enough. So it would still be about double the cost if I went to a UC instead. So I decided, hey, you know, cheaper option, let's go to a UCR and then let's see if I could transfer to a better school. So okay. I decided to go yeah. that route, yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think, um, you know, obviously because Chapman and Boston University, although they're great schools, it's expensive because they're private. Yeah, they're really expensive actually. Yeah. If, you yeah. include, if you were to include room and board, they come out so almost like sixty, seventy thousand dollars, you know. Yeah, like no, that's it's for sure. Yeah, no, I agree with you. It's definitely not worth, it, especially uh, if you want to go to a better school for like business. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the UC system is actually really great because, um, you know, being a public school university, it is a lot cheaper, like way cheaper than yeah, it's um, way cheaper. Those schools, like even without financial aid, it is still <laughs> comes out to be a lot cheaper than, um, you know, like you said, BU or Chapman. So I think yeah. definitely tuition the cost that all our students consider going into it and you know you mentioned that you plan on um, transferring eventually to another school obviously to study business so for you I guess um, I guess why did you decide to go to like an actual like four-year institution then maybe not going to community college and then transferring um, mostly because of uh, the articulation agreements that they have with the school um, if I were to do um, like a community college I would probably have to do a first year transfer because um, I wouldn't be able to gather up enough credits or also gather enough units in my major courses for my desired transfer major to be able to, you know, graduate on time at that transferred school. So basically, you know, Riverside has a, an articulation agreement with the school that I want to transfer to so I can get major courses and general education courses done. So then when I transfer in, I'll be on track to graduate in four years oh, well, okay, it's awesome. in my fourth year yeah yeah i think it's interesting you mentioned kind of like this articulation agreement i think a lot of students don't actually aren't really familiar with it um yeah. some is that you can just do community college and then transfer and that's a little great option but yeah there, you know usually in community college you're usually doing like most of your ge's and so it's like basic like really basic yeah, basic major classes courses that, yeah but at least at riverside you can take more of like i wouldn't say like upper division per se but still more of those major courses and still do ge For sure and the other things over so yeah i think it's you know, it's interesting because uh, a lot of students, we don't hear a lot of people transferring from like four years to four years. Like it's not as good. Yeah. Uh, it's just to, like, like they stick down usually. I don't know. Yeah. Usually it's like community to a four year. You rarely hear like a four year to a four year. I mean, it does happen often, but um, yeah, yeah. So I'm really glad that you mentioned 
the articulation agreement that at least um, you know UC Riverside has with your intended transfer school. And I guess, you know, let's probably take a step back. Let's uh, kind of put the current college situation right now to the side. And let's go back to about a year and a half ago to when we were seniors in high school. Ooh. <laughs> so, Alrighty. Uh, well, college application process. I guess first and foremost, um, how would you summarize your college application um, process? It was, it was quite stressful. Um, in high school, I played competitive golf. And so during senior year, even though, you know, I was – and the summertime before senior year too, even though, you know – college apps and everything I was still playing a lot of tournaments and like traveling a bit so um actually it was I found it a little bit difficult I got started a little late on my college apps so like uh I think I started doing them like mid-summer and I didn't I wasn't actually able to you know finish until like you know I think early November or something yeah like a couple weeks before it was due or whatever and also like for some of my um private schools i turned it in the day of so that was that was bad yeah okay but, um i was just a little bit busy with uh outside extracurriculars yeah for sure i mean yeah i knew you were pretty you were obviously playing competitive golf so there's a lot of um you know that does take a lot into your schedule and at the same time we're bouncing schools and other extracurricular activities so that's something to yeah. keep in mind but i guess um you know another thing to mention is so i remember you know a while back you were telling me like you know how you're an only child right yeah i'm an only child yeah. So basically, a lot of students, um, you know, they're kind of fortunate in the sense that they have like older siblings or you know people uh-huh. that they can ask yeah, for that knowledge. Help. Yeah, exactly. But you know, you being an only child, I guess, um, you know, I guess that probably plays a factor into this next question. But basically, what was your fa- way of like finding information or resources about the college application process? You know, some people they get resources from the school, some their upperclassmen yeah, friends, yeah, yeah. you have family or you know, friends in general, or maybe the internet. So for you, what was your best way of trying to um, get you know so- access to? information i feel like my best way of getting uh info on the college app process was um it was through uh some of my um some of my teachers at school actually um i did i did ask one of my teachers you know how exactly college applications work and you know first he was like oh okay if you're applying to ucs they have their own application thing and if you're applying to like privates and other institutions then you know you either have to search them up if they have a special application process or use the common app, which, you know, most schools use in the U S. So, um, mainly, yeah, I just asked some of my teachers and also, um, yeah, I searched the internet a lot. Um, I also asked my, uh, my mom for some advice because she did go to UCLA and USC. So I was like, Oh, how, how was that application process? And she's like, Oh, it was all right. And give me some details about it. That was it. Mm-hmm. So you think you were kind of fortunate in the sense that, uh, you know, you weren't really first generation per se, like at least you had a parent that went. Yeah, at least, at least I had that little bit of help, you know. Okay, she, that's awesome. Like my mom also read over some of my essays, so it's kind of nice. Okay, that's awesome, yeah. I think, I think one thing I want to mention is, you know, there's a lot of students that aren't as fortunate um, as us. I think we went to a school that had great teachers and, you know, resources that they were able to tell us what to do. Yeah, to for like. sure. But some students don't have that, you know, and a lot of districts, maybe they don't have those same resources that we were fortunate enough to have. So mm-hmm. you mentioned, obviously, use the internet. So when you're using the internet, what specifically are you, like, looking for when you're using that as kind of your way of getting information? Like, what do you search for specifically? What do I search for specifically? Well, um, depending on the school, uh, I would actually go to, like, um, what is it? So when you're applying to a school, you want to familiarize yourself with like what exactly goes on around there. So each school, usually they have all their logistics, you know, diversity, stuff like that. They also have school events um, and a lot of other programs that people often miss when applying to like applying to the school. So what I would do is I would search for like, okay, first off, like, does this school have my major? Um, what are they known for? Um, what, what what special programs do they have? Like if they were to have, um, what is it called? Uh, freaking shoot. Um, if they had like some like uh, foreign exchange or like some of those overseas study programs that okay. you see. Um, if they were to like uh, have some special graduation plans, like um, UCR happens to have uh, like a special um a special pre-med program that like you take so 
basically what it is is you go th- it's ri- it's pretty rigorous um it's four years of school but you come out with um you come out with like a med- medical degree and I, oh, really? I actually have um one of my friends uh is actually going through that program right now i think she's going to graduate next year so you know you look for those special programs um so like that will help you like further yourself in like a less amount of time or something like that you also want to look at like uh some some of the school clubs definitely that's a big one actually um certain schools have certain clubs that can give you like connections Mm -hmm. to like the alumni and such so that could be really helpful okay yeah, no, I think that was a great advice. And I like how you mentioned those special programs. A lot of students, they just think of, oh, I got to go into school for a major. Oh, but yeah. No, no, no. School. You know, four-year programs, that's not all there is to yeah. these colleges. There's, there's, so. there's a lot. Um, like, for example, like you mentioned the, the kind of the pre-med thing. I know Riverside just recently um, had a new medical school, so it's, it's going to be up and coming pretty soon mm-hmm. as well, too. But, you know, they're definitely, you know, schools off the top of my head, I can think of, like, UMKC, Georgetown. They have, like, guaranteed, like, medical school programs that you can actually apply into. So if you get in, you don't have to worry mm-hmm. about, like, later on, we're having to go into like the whole MCAT and like med school process. So That's true. obviously, you know, you're not um, going into med, you're doing business, but um, at least, yeah, you know, there are programs that even for like business, there's a lot of different programs. I know for, at least for me at USC, we have like, you can do business admin, but like with yeah. parts or like, you guys have Marshall. So yeah, no. exactly. So there's a lot of connections. So I think, you know, not only looking into a major, but also those like side college programs or like, you know, getting like maybe a graduate degree out of it as well too. Like there are mm-hmm. some ways that you can accelerate the process. Yeah, I think it's really great. And I think, you know, to conclude up the college application aspect of this. So if you could have changed anything about, you know, what you did in the polls um, process, what would you have done differently? Uh, the college application process? Or yeah, just like, uh, yeah, and just like the entire college app like process, like you, you know, applying and whatnot, would you have changed anything I think I think I wouldn't have applied to as many schools as I did. Um, I wish that I had done a little more research into like costs and such because I was not expecting um, when I got my acceptance to uh, like Chapman, I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, I got accepted to Chapman because Chapman's program is um, Ch- Chapman's econ program and business program is kind of better than uh, UCR's. But then, like, when I looked at the cost, I was like, oh, hell no, it's literally <laughs> double. So I wish I had done a little more research into that and applied to, like, less schools. I think I put, um, I put a few too many, like, reach schools, mm-hmm. if uh, we can quickly define that. Reach schools are, like, yeah. um, schools that you have a chance of getting into. You yeah, know, like, target. That I are, like, target. Yeah, they're target. really, really good, and you just, like, you're not really sure that you would get accepted 100%. I think I put a few too many of those. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, because no, that's a good point to make. I think, especially since, you know, I, I would say there's like, and at least in my opinion, there's three categories. You have your dream schools or like, yeah, like dream schools, like those schools that like are pretty hard to get accepted to, yeah. even if you are like probably like best, but you want to go there because it is a good school and you're aiming for it. Then you have like reach and target schools, like you mentioned, schools realistically you have a good chance of getting into, but it's not guaranteed. And then you have like safety schools, Correct. which is schools like you can almost guarantee that you will get accepted um, into. So you have some college to go into. And, yeah, no, I agree because those, when you have so many colleges, it's expensive just to apply. Like applying to the school is expensive, sending your test score is expensive. And then, at least for me, I don't know what happened, but I was doing financial aid and there was one thing where I had to pay to submit a financial aid application. So, oh, that's, that is true. Yeah. Right? I like, beats. I saw it and I was like, oh, well, it's just the irony. I don't know why. Why does it the exist? irony of to pay for financial aid, you know? So, um, yeah, no, I think that's yeah, definitely that's a good crazy. point to make. Like, Kids are like, oh, I gotta apply to this many schools because these are all good schools. But you, you gotta narrow it down. Like realistically, yeah. if you got accepted, what are the chances of you actually um, willing to attend that school? Yeah. Um, you know, school. another thing, another thing that I wish I did differently during the college app process was, okay, I wish that I had decided what schools I wanted to apply to like much earlier because um, there's also fees sending, sending transcripts and scores yeah. to schools. So when I found out that. I had to send X amount of AP scores and X amount of SAT, ACT scores over to the schools. I was like, are you serious? Yeah, and right? Those, totally those aren't really that cheap either. It's so, expensive. you know, having to, I mean, I get it. College board tells you, they say, after you took the, after you take this AP test, you have like, you have a one week, one or two week period where you can uh, send free scores over to a certain school. But, but you only get one obviously, school, Obviously, yeah, exactly. But obviously, 
at the time when I took some some of my AP tests during my sophomore and junior year, I was like, well, I don't know what school I want to apply to yet, you know. So that ended up piling up like a couple hundred dollars in costs, mm -hmm. man. It was yeah, hard. it is it is so expensive. Like you don't realize, like even if you just apply to like ten schools, I think honestly, ten schools out of like the application and like the fees well, you're paying schools, almost. Like, like yeah, you're, they're paying like already a thousand dollars, if not more, just on how everything racks up. Yeah, and just how everything like, works. It is crazy. Yeah, it's a uh, it is a business, but you know it is what it is. Yeah, no, I think that was great. So I think uh, let's go back to a little bit more about UC Riverside. I think we'd rather talk about that than high school yeah. <laughs> senior year <laughs> life stuff. So I think um, first and foremost, um, so obviously you're going to a public school, and one thing that's associated with the UC schools is that since it is a public institution, it mm -hmm. is a lot larger in its population size. So. Yeah. I guess first and foremost, you know, being a business student, you don't really have like those lab classes compared to like STEM students. So how are your class sizes? Are they like pretty large or do my you still class have like sizes, man? My first class that I ever stepped into was um was a um introduction to macroeconomics class. And that class was held in the university lecture hall. And I swear to God, there are at least there were the first class session, of course, you know less people attend afterwards but the first class session was packed and i swear to god there were like 450 people in that Jeez. lecture hall and i had to so i thought hey you know i can get there you know a few minutes early no a few minutes early was not enough and i walked i walked in five minutes early five minutes before class started but i had to sit near the back rows there's like i think i swear to god there's three sections of there were three sections of, um, there was a middle, a left, and a right side, and each section had, I swear to God, like, 25 rows of seats. Oh, my gosh. And it, they were all, like, I don't know, 16, 17 seats wide, so it was a lot. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of people in there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the class size uh, depends on the class, to be honest, because mm -hmm. some classes are, like, held... Um, held in different buildings and mm -hmm. so like um what is it uh one of my upper my, my upper division uh macroeconomic and microeconomic classes um actually they only had like 90 to 100 people so that was that was a lot better but um yeah really depends on what course you take like when you register for classes does 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 usc have uh like how many seats are open yeah, they'll um, tell you how many seats I maximum. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So usually, usually the big courses are like the general education courses. The thing is, those happen to be part of my major, you know, oh. since economics. So like, yeah. um, <laughs> they filled up really fast. But um, right. for schools that have like big classes that fill up fast, you know, usually they have a like a reservation process. You know, mm, okay. they have reserved. They have a wait list. They have reserved seating. So okay, it's not That's that nice. bad. But yeah, it really, I feel like the big class kind of, it takes away from this, um, the connection that you can get with a professor in a small class. So mm -hmm. I think that that's kind of a problem. Yeah, and actually just to expand on that, you mentioned obviously, you know, in a, such a larger class, it's harder to connect with the professor or even the TA sometimes. So, yeah. I, I mean, in your opinion, did you ever have any difficulties trying to communicate with your professor? Yeah, I mean, if you even did communicate with them. Um, and, okay, so not really. Uh, turns out that, at UCR, not a lot of people actually attend office hours. Like, really? there is almost, I swear to God, every time or the few times that I've gone in for office hours with the professor or the TA, um, there's almost no one in there. <laughs> so <laughs> the only time it really filled up was near like a midterm or near the okay. final, you know, of course. <laughs> but by then, the, the professor's like, why are you asking me this now? Why did you not come in, like, mm, earlier? Yeah. You know, so, yeah. But yeah, it's, it, honestly, the big class size doesn't really hinder much. They're checking their emails constantly. So, you know, emailing professors, even if they receive, like, 100-something a day, you know, they'll get to you eventually. Yeah. That's, That's what they nice. get paid to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's good that you have that. I mean, I, I actually agree with you on the, in the sense that uh, surprisingly even for me i didn't i was surprised to see that not many people go to office hours i mean to be honest i think for ge courses people didn't really don't really care as much because they are some yeah. years so like you're just doing to get rid of it so people don't really join but at least in my experience you know being stem i know a lot of pre-med students so whenever i went to office oh, hours they're like yeah, sure can answer session everyone's there like everyone's there every single week so it is i would say it does differ between the class and the major 
on in terms of office hours. But it's nice to know that even though you do have a super large class, um, that you still have the ability to talk with the professor. And I think, you know, like I said, it varies case by case on like what the class is, but um, I think it's still definitely possible. And they do check their email. I, well, most of them, but I would say most of them, yeah. Stuff. But to some extent, the professors, um, at least I've gotten to know, have been pretty good with um, responding and whatnot. So yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, awesome. I think um, moving on to another thing that you you actually mentioned earlier that was big um, for colleges as extracurriculars. So um, being at UC Riverside, uh, what are some extracurriculars that you're participating in? And if you want to like maybe elaborate on one or two of them. Yeah. So um, Riverside had uh, so obviously most colleges they have their orientation, yes. And um, during that orientation, they had like a they had a, a few hours of the orientation where um, all the clubs got set up around. So I was able to choose a few clubs that I was interested in. And so um, at first I joined, uh, <laughs> I joined the gaming club. I'm not sure I would count that as an extracurricular. <laughs> um, but I also, I also, uh, I took part in the UCR Taekwondo club for a little oh, bit. Really? Interesting. And yeah, yeah, it was, they have a Taekwondo club. Yeah, USD has one too, actually. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was kind of a bit fun. Um, mm -hmm. It was a good workout. But I also um, I was part of the um, UCR Future Business Leaders of America Club, and mm -hmm. I was very happy that they they had that there because I was afraid um, when I looked at um, UCR's club list originally, they had um, they had uh, Future Business Leaders of America under a different name. Oh, it's just, it just like future business leaders. I don't know, something like that. But I was like, oh, hey, is this the right club? And they're like, yeah. And I was happy because I, part I participated in that club for four years in high school. Yeah. And, you know, I was hoping that I could like learn a lot more in college. And yeah, it helped. Mm -hmm. It helped me out a bit, you know. Yeah. Also, I, I you know, they, they held some, they, held, they, they hold workshops all the time. Oh yeah, even, for sure. Even like even this past quarter, you know, they would still. Um, I opted in for um, what is it? Uh, the their weekly workshop notifications and stuff like that. So they would send me like, oh hey, look, they're gonna have a Zoom workshop, and so I was like, oh wow, maybe I'll join one of those. And you know, it really helps because uh, they could help you write resumes, like uh, do job interviews, stuff like that, or like general yeah. stuff, like how to write up formal essay stuff like that you know oh. if you have some trouble in that All also right. um, another i guess this could count as a does a job count as an extracurricular i would count it personally I, you I would think count it? okay so um i picked I up a part i picked up a part-time job um at a, a restaurant that was reopening on campus it was called the barn right. Um, however, so we were we were still in training when all this COVID stuff happened. And uh -huh. so like, you know, I mean I got I got um I got put on paid leave, but you know, I wasn't really able to do much there. Um okay. other than like the basic training and going through all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We weren't able to fully open during uh during the school year. So that was unfortunate. Okay. But yeah, I feel like yeah. everyone. I feel like everyone should get a part-time job in college if they can. It's yeah, just, I know. Because, sure. um, to be honest, um, like here, let me cite this from my experience. Um, my uncle does. Uh, he does interviews for a law firm, and he mm -hmm. said that he doesn't really care about the degree. He wants to know that people have you know previous experience working at a yeah. law firm or some some institution of that degree. You know, mm -hmm. so I think that experience is a lot more important than like um, the overall degree sometimes. But, yeah. you know, that's subject to change. So yeah. <laughs> depending yeah, no, on no. where you go, like if you, if you went to like, for example, if you went to if you went to law school at Harvard or if you went to, to law school at, I don't know, um, I don't know, like Cal, like a Cal State. Right. Like oh. what's what's the difference there? You know, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's where some experience doesn't play it doesn't play as um doesn't play as much of a part but like if you're going for um i don't know some other job yeah like experience is always helpful yeah no i definitely agree with you i think especially being business you know it's huge that you know business students it's it's known that you, you want to get internships or part-time jobs and i agree with you on that one like um even if it's a job that's not even related to what you're studying it's yeah. nice though because one thing you get pocket money so you can actually start spending <laughs> for sure. you know, trust me trust me you're gonna start spending money once you get to college and you don't realize how much you know paying like going out to eat or whatnot so you want kind of want that pocket money 
Um, but I think also, you know, even whether it's related to your subject or not, it's nice to have something that yeah. kind of allows you to get experience of a work environment. Like, you know, obviously it may mm -hmm. not be what you're aiming to go for in the future. You could be a doctor end up working in retail, but it's still nice because for example, if you're a doctor working in retail, you at least have the ability to talk with people. To yeah, communication. Is exactly. Important. And you develop other skills that you might not think would apply to you, but it does help out in the future. And I highly recommend that everyone try it, doing retail or like in a restaurant at least once in their lives. Um, it's an experience. Yeah, I feel like everyone, so what is it? I remember, I think um, one of my friend's parents said, I feel like everyone should work at a fast food joint <laughs> at some point in their lives. And I mean, yeah. I didn't do that, but I worked, you know, restaurant, yeah. you know, same Close thing, enough. you know. Close enough. Yeah, no, I, Close agree. Enough. I, I think you know, everyone should do fast food and retail because uh, I think so, much, so many times we associate people that work in there with people who are just, oh, they just can't get a job. No, but realistically, there's some high schools working there. Those people like, when yeah. you work in an experience like that, you realize how different everyone's story really is. Like, it's not because they couldn't get a job because some people really, um, you know, some people are doing that as like a, another job on top of what they already have. So mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely, I, it, it's a, it's an eye opener. I think everyone should at least experience it. And also you develop a lot more communication skills in like working in a restaurant or um, retail. So yeah. And I think, um, you know, kind of just to wrap up the entire video. So if you could give advice to high school students, you know, whether that be about college application process, college lifestyle or just life in general uh what would you tell them what would i tell them well high school students um you are going to want to know which colleges you apply which colleges you want to apply to probably you know i feel like by the end of sophomore year if you have a good idea of what college you want to apply to so that you can better work towards that goal, whether it be like picking up a part-time job, doing internships, or even just volunteering, volunteering somewhere, you know? Like, I feel like you guys should probably try to try to have this goal in mind by the end of your sophomore year, if possible. If you don't have a goal, that's completely fine, but just make sure to do a bunch of research. Um, make sure that the place that you're applying to is really somewhere that you want to go. Um, also, uh, something that some people do not pay attention to that much, uh, you want to look at, um, you want to look at costs, obviously, but you want to look at, like, um, I think, uh, standard of living in college is yeah. kind of important. It's something that I didn't really think of too much mm. until I actually, I actually moved in. <laughs> mm. So, okay. um, obviously you know you wouldn't you wouldn't understand as much because usc's dorms are so nice you know you guys got that new freshman dorm um, a couple, the campus commons um yeah. a few years back but you know ucr you know we're not we're not the nicest school <laughs> regarding our dorms but we did we did we did just build a new building though that holds a couple okay. thousand people that might be nice but i haven't actually checked it out but um you kind of want to you kind of want to understand what the standard of living is going to be like and also, you might want to plan for what's going to happen in the next few years because usually um, in colleges, you only stay in the student dorms for the first year and then you're going to have to move out. So oh, you, yeah. might want to, you might want to plan for that as well. Yeah. Just a thumbs up, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you on that one. I mean, you know, USC, it's some, you know, some dorms are, yeah, some are, some are nice. I, I think yeah. for me, being in, still being in SoCal, the one thing I needed was an AC. There's no way I was going to go. <laughs> dorm that didn't there have there wasn't? Oh, but, man. There's some, no, some dorms don't. So I, was, so I had to choose one that did have it. Like, yeah, you're, oh, you're paying a little sucks. bit more. But in my know, opinion, every, I, every building, every building on UCR is set to a temperature of, I believe, 70 degrees. Oh, please. <laughs> so the AC is on full blast all the time. <laughs> Except during yeah. the winter. The winter is okay. the only time that I uh -huh. think they they turned on a heating system, but oh wow, I don't remember. I don't remember it. That yeah. Well. No, for me, it was like, we had our own AC, like we got to control the temperature, but definitely, I would say if you're going to stay right. in like California or SoCal, definitely look into that. You're going to want some AC. I mean, you know, in, sure. in college, like if you're going to go to the East coast, like Boston or whatnot, then yeah, find one with a heater. But um, oh, yeah. I think, yeah. But yeah, I agree with you. Uh, campus living, like, you know, your living um, style is going to be different. Cause you know, at least I think at USC for me, I'm fortunate enough that, I'm guaranteed housing for my freshman and sophomore year. So mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about like, you know, junior, senior. And worst comes to worst, I'm pretty local, so I can just commute to the school. But you know, Oh, you another to... thing. You know what? What's really important is um, food, guys. You need to understand that um, you don't have, even if you live in the dorms, like you're not going to be able to just um, go down to like your cafeteria or your dining hall and just get food whenever you want. Um, 
certain schools have different plans, like meal plans for it. I think you can eat as many meals as you can, right? For freshman year, for, yeah. So, yeah, for freshman year, you guys get unlimited meals at USC, yeah. but yeah. you have to stop after a certain time. So yeah. at like some of the UCs, um, like UCR, we have meal plans that we have to pay for. And I mean, um, I got the un- unlimited meal plan, but like um, there are other like, there are other benefits that come with certain meal plans that you might want to look into. Mm-hmm. Like uh, they give us dining dollars at UCR. So um, you can use those at uh, campus restaurants and like convenience stores, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But um, I get less because I have unlimited meals in the dining halls. Yeah. And also, you know, the dining halls close off at around like eight o'clock, eight thirty. I don't know when yours oh, wow. closes, but That's pretty early, actually. it's yeah. See, for me, it closes really early. It closes so, at ten. Like I, I have to make sure. 10, yeah. I either have to make sure that I'm full or like stock up on its snacks or whatever for later. Yeah. Especially when like people are working late at night or something like that, or yeah, like you gotta- pulling an all nighter. You're gonna want something, so you yeah. need to make sure that your food situation is kind of cleared up as well. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, I, I think APM APM is pretty early. I, ours is open until like ten, but no, definitely yeah. Yeah, that's important. Have snacks in your thing, and you know, don't abuse that's the nice. ramen. I yeah. I didn't realize how true the ramen was, <laughs> but um, you know, freshman uh-huh. fifteen is a thing. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, no, I think that was you know it was really great advice. I think it was nice you know, touching up on, especially looking ahead into the future and understanding that there's a lot more to college than just the name or the degree that you're going for. There's a lot of other aspects. So yeah. I mean, other than that, obviously, Kylan, we want to thank you so much for coming out and talking with us. Um, and obviously, for everyone watching, we hope that you got a lot of information from it. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.